So before we dive into the math, let's take a brief moment to meditate and relax ourselves. Gently close your eyes and take a deep breath, a deep inhale through your nose and slowly exhale through your nose. On the next inhale, see if you can hear the breath in the back of your throat. And exhale slowly, see if you can hear that audible breath. Inhale deeply. And as you slowly exhale, feel those tense spots relax. One last slow, long inhale. And then see how slowly you can exhale. and you can gently open your eyes. So today, instead of working on a math problem together, I wanted to share with you a really important test-taking strategy. Here we're looking at the answer form for section three of the SAT test, which is where the math section begins. Sections one and two are reading, and they take about an hour and a half. Sections three and four are math, and they take about an hour and a half as well. So this is the answer sheet for section three. It does not allow calculators, and you'll see that it has 15 multiple choice problems, and it has five grid-in problems where you'll come up with a numerical answer, write it in the boxes, and then fill in the bubbles for the numbers and symbols that correspond to that answer. So section three has a total of 20 questions and it has a 25 minute time limit. So that's just about a minute per question, a little more than a minute per question. And after section three is over, everyone will be given a five minute break. And then you'll start on section four, which is um, a section that does allow calculators. And here is the answer sheet for this section. And you'll notice that it has 30 multiple choice questions, followed by eight grid in answers. So that's a total of 38 questions. And this section of the test is 55 minutes long. So 38 questions in 55 minutes. Again, an average of a little more than a minute per question. So with only a little more than a minute for each question, it's going to be really important to have a strong time management strategy. So here comes the fun part. We're going to do an activity that illustrates a really valuable time management hack or trick. So go get a piece of paper and something to write with. You can pause the video now and you can restart it when you have those materials. Okay, so in this activity, we're not gonna solve any math problems. I'm gonna show you a pair of problems and I want you to decide which of those would be easier for you to solve. So here we have two problems. They're from section three of the SAT test, which does not allow calculators. Problem 15 is a multiple choice problem and 16 is a grid in problem where you have to come up with a numerical answer and then grid that into the answer sheet. So take about five seconds, look at both, decide which of these would be easier for you, and then on your piece of paper, 
write down either 15 or 16. Okay, we're going to go on to the next pair. Here we have 15 and 16. 15 is a multiple choice problem and 16 is a grid in. Take about five seconds to look at these. Again, no calculator is allowed. And just write down which of these would be easier for you to solve, 15 or 16. Okay, this is a new pair of problems. Again, no calculator is allowed. 15 is a multiple choice problem, 16 is a grid in. Take a few seconds to look at both. And then on your piece of paper, write down 15 or 16, depending on which of those you think is gonna be easier for you to solve. Okay, 15 and 16, on your piece of paper, write down which of these would be easier for you to solve. 15 is multiple choice and 16 is grid in. Okay, again, 15 and 16, write down which of these would be easier for you to solve. Next pair, which of these two would be easier for you to solve, 15 or 16? Write that number down on your piece of paper. Okay, and of these two, which would be easier for you to solve, 15 or 16? Write that down on your piece of paper. Fifteen or sixteen, which would be easier? Write the number of that problem on your paper. Okay. Now we're going to go on to a different pair of questions. These come from section four of the SAT test. So a calculator is allowed. Problem 30 is a multiple choice problem, and problem 31 is a grid in. Take about five seconds to look at these, and on your piece of paper, write down which of these would be easier for you to solve, 30 or 31. Okay. Again, a calculator is allowed on these problems. You have 30 as a multiple choice problem and 31 as a grid in. Take a look and write down which would be easier for you, 30 or 31. Okay. All right, so on all of the remaining ones, a calculator is allowed. So write down which of these would be easier for you to solve, 30 or 31. All right. Write down which of these would be easier for you to solve, 30 or 31. Okay, here's a new pair. Which would be easier for you to solve, 30 or 31? Write that down. Same thing. Which would be easier for you, 30 or 31? Write that down. All right. New pair, which would be easier for you, 30 or 31? Write that down. Okay. 
which is easier for you, 30 or 31? Write the number of the problem down on your piece of paper. Okay, let's take a look. So you may recall that the first half of the activity was comparing two problems. One was 15 and one was 16. So I want to show you where they came from. They were all college board problems from SAT tests, and they came from section three of the test, which does not allow calculators. Problem 15 was always the last problem in the multiple choice section. And problem 16 was always the first grid-in problem. So I want you to now look at your piece of paper and look at whether you wrote down 15 or 16, and there are a number of times that you wrote down each of those. I'm guessing that you did not always write down 15, that you did not always think that the earlier problem was easier. I'm guessing that for some of the time, or maybe even much of the time, you wrote down 16. So what this is telling you is if you did not always write down 15, we know that the later problems are not necessarily the hardest problems. And I wanted to show you this to emphasize that as you're working through the multiple choice problems, right? They'll probably start out easier and they'll get harder and harder. And then toward the end, the multiple choice problems are going to get probably somewhat difficult. And if you ever see yourself thinking, this problem is going to take me quite a bit longer than one minute, go ahead and skip that problem. Set it aside and have a look at the grid in problems that are later in the test. Because they very well may start out quite a bit easier than the last of those multiple choice problems. So this is a really important time management strategy when you're taking standardized tests. You want to spend your valuable time on the problems that are going to be easiest for you to solve. So feel free to skip some of the problems in the multiple choice section that are getting harder and harder and have a look at the early grid in problems so that if some of those are quite simple, you can knock those off. Now, before you finish your whole test, you want to make sure you didn't leave any blanks. So if some of the problems are really hard and you didn't have time for them, go ahead and make sure you bubble in a guess because you might get it right. So now let's look at the second part of the activity. All right, so you may recall that we then were comparing problems that were numbered 30 and 31. These all came from section four of the College Board SAT test. And section four does allow calculators. Problem 30 was always the last of the multiple choice questions in section four. And 31 was the first grid in problem in section four. So same thing. Look at the numbers you wrote down. Did you always write down 30? Did you always think that number 30 was going to be easier for you to solve than number 31? I'm guessing that the answer is no. That for some or maybe even much of the time, you wrote down 31. Again, that's showing us that the early grid in problems may in fact be easier for you to solve than the later multiple choice problems. So the concept is the same. 
as you're doing the multiple choice problems, do the easy ones. And if you get to the ones that are starting to seem like they're going to take a lot more than one minute, set them aside, skip them, and make sure you have a close look at the early grid in problems if those are going to be easy for you to solve. And then again, make sure that before you finish that whole section of the test, that you don't leave anything blank in your answer sheet, that you're at least taking a guess, even on the ones that you're not sure about. I hope you enjoyed seeing this really important time management strategy. If you have any questions or any suggestions or requests, please leave them as comments below. And if you subscribe to this channel, you'll be notified of new videos as they become available. I really enjoyed working together and I look forward to seeing you again soon.